This video is a three-part series. You are watching part two. So, Tim the Tatman, what is his uh, design? Let's check it out. So we're on a similar design here, but there is some sort of fractal noise going around the border. This is also super easy. I guess the most impressive thing here is the reveal of his name. There's a little shine effect on the name. We're probably not going to do that, but I'm going to show you how to do uh, that reveal. And I'm also going to show you how to do the fractal noise. Super easy. <laughs> You'll see very, very easy stuff. As you can see, there is it. There is a color scheme here. We're going with like grays and also white and also uh, this yellow, which is kind of confusing. I didn't know that Tim Tatman had that color scheme. It doesn't seem to appear anywhere else. Oh, never mind. He changed his color scheme. So now it's gray and uh, light yellow. As you can see, the graphic style plus the color scheme is very important. This is why everything is now gray and yellow. You know, obviously a professional graphic designer took care of that. Tim the Tatman, if you're watching this, obviously or not, uh, you should probably change your accent color to reflect the same yellow in order to match everything. Anyways, let's get started and let's make uh, Tim the Tatman's over. It. It's cool because those are so simple that I can just do them directly in After Effects. I don't need Photoshop. Anyways, let's uh, create a new composition. So I'm going to go to composition, new composition. Uh, this time we want it to be 10 seconds because of the animation of the name reveal and uh, still 720p we will want something a little thicker when it comes to the uh, rectangle so same thing double click on the rectangle to fill the frame so that we have the the you know a good 16 by 9 aspect ratio but if you want it to be thinner does it have it thinner don't be afraid to make it thinner you can just crop your your webcam when you have to never mind it is 16 by 9 it is full you don't it, it shouldn't have to be that wide but you can basically if you want to make it thin <laughs> You can reduce the width if you want. All right, so let's get rid of the fill. First thing, oh, pff, what am I doing? Click on fill, oh, it's blue. Click none, boom, no fill. Let's select the color here. It really doesn't matter what color you choose here because we're gonna replace it with some fractal noise and we're gonna make this a little thick just like yeah just like that 34 this time okay i'm trying to leave some space for the name reveal i need to remember that let's bump up the scale i press s while the the layer is selected and okay now let's create a new solid you can go to layer new solid or press Control y doesn't matter and in effects here i'm gonna look for fractal noise okay fractal noise is fine uh, for Tim, well, this is the part where you can improvise, really. I'm, I'm not going to even look back at Tim's one, but it's basically some sort of um, fractal noise going on and it's on an animation. So you can play around with it as much as you want. Rocky is probably uh, what he has. Uh, contrast, you want this to be the way you want, whatever. And brightness, we want that down, actually, because we want to keep it kind of gray. So actually less contrast, I guess. <laughs> something like that the cool thing with the fractal noise is that you have the evolution here so this is the animation that we're going for see i'm moving the evolution and same thing with rotation every time you see a little number before it that means one full rotation so i can click on the stopwatch here to start the animation basically the keyframe sorry and then i can type whatever number i want in this case i think i want three all right let's play it see what it looks like boom it's organic it's nice and uh i don't know if it cuts out actually at the end let's see does it cut okay that is bad bad twitch animation right there okay it shouldn't cut no one should see exactly when the animation starts over okay so let's go to evolution option and let's check cycle evolution and i'm not gonna put you through the 10 seconds again i'm gonna click on eight seconds press play and you see that perfect animation perfect loop obviously people will kind of see because your name is going to appear and then disappear all right remember the track mat thing that i told you about yes now you have this but you want it to be tracked to the um, outline we're gonna place it under the outline okay you want the actual track mat to be up top and then on the track mat we're gonna click on alpha mat this time it's the right solution basically alpha mat Boom. And there you go. You already have your fractal noise. It might be a little thick, actually. <laughs> but the cool thing here is that it's still, it is linked to this. So if I play around with the width, 
of the stroke look at that would you look at that would you look at it anyways let's go ahead and do the name reveal first of all you need to write your name I type L uh, level okay you can use the same technique if you want you can animate uh, a line basically covering the whole name and then that could be it or you can go ahead and make it actually type it there are some presets with after effects where you can already have like some sort of animation but select the color here and in this case it was yellow but you know i don't want to make it exactly like tim's mine would probably be purple let's 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 be honest here okay so let's make it purple let's find a better font he had something like some brush if you don't have any interesting fonts what you can do is download some new ones at uh, thefont.com this is not an endorsement i i don't have any link with them but this is where i download my fonts that's it does that look horrible this is the longest part of graphic or motion design is picking up the correct font oh i have one called dirty brush let's go with that I'm, I'm not a huge fan but we can make it like full bold Eh, i really don't like it but whatever all right uh when it comes to the leading i don't want that to be auto i actually want to control that let's make it close like that okay the tracking is high but let's make it a little closer and um i think we're good okay let's make that a little bigger let's play with the leading boom and there we go all right we're gonna animate it and then we'll rotate it in place let's make sure we have the move tool selected we're gonna have that like that and um we can go ahead and create a mask that would basically we create the mask and it will follow the mask to reveal it or we can create as i said we can create some sort of um line that animates i think animating the line might be like the easiest solution so let's go for that so i'm gonna deselect everything select the pen tool so that it's creating a basic basically a shape and i'm gonna do this so it's gonna be it's gonna look more like what tim the tapman is using or his graphic designer i must say okay basically we're gonna make the width so that it covers the whole name and we're just gonna track mat it that easy this is why this tutorial is not well this is not a tutorial uh, <laughs> but this is not for um beginners because please learn how to use the pen tool it's a lifesaver uh most people hate using it i understand why but learn how to use it okay boom cool thing here is i'm gonna show you techniques that <laughs> the same technique for everything okay so here we want the the butt caps to be round let's go to content shape uh stroke and line cap we want round cap boom you see little round cap and now we're gonna animate them remember how we animated them we clicked on add and then trim path right but this time in our timeline we don't want it to be from beginning to the end so we're gonna pick somewhere in the middle to make it appear around three seconds up to four seconds and then it's gonna disappear around seven seconds okay so animate in from two seconds or three seconds oh i don't know if you <laughs> actually saw hey i showed it once already okay so trim path is here i'm gonna show it up here and then we're gonna have end we want this to be like that there you go boom all right Actually, I'm going to move this a little bit so that the G kind of shows up first. There you go. I'm going to move the ending just to make sure it covers everything. It doesn't anymore. And now it does. OK, cool. All right. So this is zero because it's not revealing yet. So we're going to put end to zero here. Boom. And when we move to four seconds, so it's going to take one second. It's going to reveal everything in one second or you can make it take a little bit more if you want to one one second and a half right so it will animate like this it will reveal all of this and then you're gonna wait a couple seconds and then around seven seconds here we're gonna add a new keyframe okay so it's like basically gonna add the same value so where it's at keyframe this and around one second and a half we're gonna make it disappear all right okay now track mats how do they work they need to be on top of the thing that you want to reveal or to hide and it is all our <laughs> it is our get level thingy here so we're gonna click alpha mat and it should disappear boom it disappeared now if i do this actually let me click 
elsewhere, so <laughs> we're not distracted by the lines, it would do this. Shboom, 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 shboom. Okay, let me actually play it. Okay, nice. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you like a little technique. I want to rotate both of those, right? I could just press shift, select them, press R, and then rotate them. But they probably don't have the exact same uh, anchor point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate them by creating a null object. A null object is something that has nothing. It's like a transparent layer, if you will. But the way you use it is that it gives you those little um, things so that you can use it for adjustments. So I'm going <laughs> to... I'm moving faster than I can that I can think and actually explain. So I'm going to link this. So pick whip it the shape. So that's the lines basically. OK, and then I'm going to pick whip the text to the null object. And now the cool thing is that the null object, if I move it around, for example, I just press P. OK, they will follow. All right. So that's why I'm using a null object here. There's just a little little thing. If you have multiple stuff that you want to move, you can do that. So I'm going to do this. OK, I'm going to rotate the null object because now the lines, if I turn it on, they're following also. Right. They're also there. And then I'm going to press P to put it in place since there's a little thing here. There it is. There it is. It's actually probably not the position that he has at all. Yeah, not at all. And his is not even rotated at all. <laughs> See, you don't need to have good memory in order to be a motion designer. Let's put this here, put it there, boom, just like that. You can even scale it down with this. All right. And if you want to just grab it and move it, you can also do that. I'm keeping the slight rotation. I think mine, I think it looks all right. I'm not against it. All right. Or am I? I guess I am. What else? Then, you know, there's the text here. Top donation. I don't think I don't think you need a tutorial for that. You just put a text that says top donation and you make it uh, whatever one of the colors of your color scheme is. All right. Same thing for this. If I were to export it, I would probably like if I'm actually doing this, I would probably crop it to make it closer to the edges. But here is just an example. I would add to render queue, go to QuickTime, and then RGB plus alpha. Now, personally, if I'm actually using it for myself, I would probably convert it to a WebM just so that the file is compressed and a little smaller. And then render it. I need water. Boom. Who's next? Make sure you watch part one for more details.